RV here, host of Men Are the Prize, the podcast. Welcome back. I hope your week is doing well. I hope your weekend is enjoyable. I hope life is treating you well. It's another episode, another time for us to talk, for me to, you know, introduce maybe a new voice to you. Um, as we prepare for this episode, you know I'm a dad, a stay-at-home dad of four. This guest, when I was looking at what he does and what we're going to talk about, I'm like, he fits. I get up every day, and I was thinking about this a few days ago. So I've got four kids, and two of them are teens, so they can get themselves up and ready to go and head to the bus stop. But I have one. She's eight. And she still, I still need to go wake her up you know, feed her breakfast, make sure she gets dressed. You know, we black, make sure that proper lotion is put on here. We're not trying to be ashy out in the world. You know what's up? So I got to make sure she's ready. But she drags about. And, you know, I get up early and do this. And it's annoying that I don't have a kid who's energized and ready to go. And so at times I may not speak to her the right way. And it, it reminded me, I'm sending a student out mm. into the world. And I know for me, I can't learn if I'm in a bad mood. I can't learn if I'm not feeling confident, if I'm not feeling ready to tackle everything that's going out there. So the dads out there, this is just a quick comment. If you're like me and you get the kids out and you're sending them out into the world, do your best to send those kids out with a smile, with some laughter in their heart, with a warm embrace, because your kids are going to do so much better when they feel good when they walk into school. It's a long day. I don't know if you remember. It's a long day, early, all the way into the afternoon. So dads out there, make sure that you send your kids out with a laugh, a tickle or something, because they'll do better when they feel good, when they're happy. The reason this fits is because my guest, Michael Peoples. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Excellent. I'm honored that you're here. And the reason he fits this is why. You know I love a bio. Print that out. I like a good read. This is Michael P. He is an entrepreneur and youth speaker. The name of his company is BU and Prosper LLC. He helps high school and college students increase their confidence so they can prosper academically and professionally. When I read that, I'm like, he does this, maybe it's professionally and such, but I do it professionally too, because it's my kids. And I got to do a good job of taking care of my kids. I'm like, they need to feel confident when they step out. And if I'm bugging them because of something they didn't do, then I'm not doing my job. So that's why you really, it felt really good to be able to talk to you. Do me a favor real quick before we get into it. Would you mind telling us a little bit about Be You and Prosper? Yes, it's a global mindset where we help the youth break those mental barriers of self-doubt, overthinking, unsure what to, to do next by reminding them that the power is in being themselves and for them to really understand and find those talents, talents and abilities so they can, and to make sure they connect with their vision so they can prosper. Wonderful, wonderful. Any organization that is there to help and uplift students, I'm going to be a fan of. So again, thank you for creating such thank a you. wonderful thank you. organization. Okay. Two, if you've listened to this podcast, you know what I do. But if not, and you're new, welcome. What I do here is I take the word prize. And four of the letters in the word prize represent attributes characteristics that I think are good for men. And that's what I like to have a conversation about. The first letter in the word prize is P and it represents purpose. Purpose is defined as a reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So Michael, what is your purpose? Hmm. I believe my purpose is to motivate and inspire people, whether it be the youth or 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 adults, to remind them to be the best version of themselves and for them to pursue their dreams and visions. Why do you think that's important? Because 
I look at society and I just see so many people beginning how to dream and they don't understand that that they had that dream for a particular reason. And as we get older, sometimes we can get caught up in our jobs and we just get stuck in doing the same routine and we forget to take time out to study ourselves to really then skin who we are at who we are at our core and and also to really take that time out to dream again. Wonderful. And to really Wonderful. To pursue it. That's so good. That's so good. That positive talk is such a good thing. And you're right. We don't hear it enough. There's so much so much negativity for the social media or news or just in the world. It always feels like we're flooded with all the bad stuff that happens. Yes. And we need everybody needs to be reminded that there's good in the world, especially our children. So it's good. Raise kids in a positive space. They're more positive when they, you know, when they head out into the space on their own. Um, I wanted to ask, so did you have somebody like you growing up? Did you have a positive voice growing up as a young man? Uh, yes, I've been very blessed. I've had a very supportive family okay. from my parents to cousins, uncles, aunts, grandparents. They they really spoke life into me and I have realized now the importance of it and just coming in contact with people. And a lot of people did not experience that. And sometimes it shows in different areas of their life. Okay, that's good. It's a, not a lot of us have had the benefit of that kind of positive life that being spoken into us. A lot of us have kind of grown up negativity and just, it just not be able to eat, live, all the real basic things that everybody should have. So that yeah. when you don't even have the basic things, it's really hard to see life in a positive, you know, in a positive light. So again, what you do is wonderful. Um, you. So do you remember, or is there a specific moment when you're like, this is what I need to do, that I need to be this positive voice, this help people be themselves and prosper? Was there a moment or was it something you always were going to do? Yeah. Um. I knew I always wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was eight years old. I, I knew that, but I did not know that I was going to, that, that, that I would be doing speaking for a living. I did not know that was going to be it. I did remember people, would be classmates and people in general would just look to me for the answers. They all view me as a leader. I was like, okay, so I knew that I had leadership capabilities, but I did not know that it was going to turn into speaking. I remember in my mind saying to me that as soon as I heard my voice, I I have not shut up since then. <laughs> but, but outside of that, outside of that, uh, I just, I did not know that, once again, that speaking was going to be a vehicle for me. Okay, and that's good. Do you enjoy speaking in front of groups? Are you, are you comfortable in that space? I truly, I truly love it. I truly love it. It's a feeling that is hard to explain, mm -hmm. knowing that, um, making an impact on people is truly priceless. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Okay. So the next letter in the word prize is R, and the word is resilience. Resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness. If, if willing, can you think of a situation, something that happened to you, that you had to deal with that showed you that you had the resilience that you didn't know that you had? Wow, I can take that in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, when I was first born, because according to doctors, I wasn't supposed to walk, talk, see, or hear when I was born. I weighed one pound eight ounces. I was four months premature. I had a grade four brain bleed. I was covered along the size of a ruler. I had developed an infection. The doctors told my parents 
either the infection or the medicine would kill me. And through the grace of God, he he made he made he made it all happen. I was told that I wasn't going to graduate middle school and high school. I had no chance of going to college, I was told. I overcame those odds and graduated from a four-year college. So I I felt that since I was before I could even say a word, I I had to had that fight in me in a sense. Wow, brother. You so you were born into struggle and you came out of it. So one, I'm honored that I'm here to talk to you, to hear your voice. Because for people who maybe aren't feeling as motivated, as confident, who not even lazy, just aren't really pushing themselves, it's I'm I don't know if I could be looking at you and saying, I don't know if I can do what I can do when you literally just told me all that you've been through. If you Obviously, a strong brother can go through just being born and not expected to get educated and to live. And you've done it 10 times over. There's thank no, you. I can't help but feel motivated by what you say and by your presence here. So thank you. Because I don't know if I want to talk about that. Yeah. But and that's and I think that's what I like about you, aside from everything that you've done. And I saw that. But the fact that you're talking about it, the fact not only are you striving. But you're doing something we men don't usually do. You are vulnerable about your business. And we usually aren't. So yeah. I applaud you for that. You you are such, you this is very much what all men should be doing, talking about our experience, because it helps everyone. So again, yes. thank yes. you. Thank you so much for that. Your life is perseverance. You are continually every day you're proving somebody wrong. That's what's yes. up. That yeah. is fantastic. Yes. That's yes. fantastic. Yes. And also I've learned that ex. It's bigger than me. I understand my purpose is bigger than me. I can, I'm destined to help so many people out there. That's good. That's so good. That is so good. Um, the next letter in prize is I, but I skip it. We'll come back to it. Um, but the next letter is Z and the word is zeal. And zeal stands for enthusiastic devotion. Just to kind of give you an idea, the reason I created this podcast is I wanted men to have an open space to talk, to speak about their emotions about. And a lot of the men I talk to are in my age. I'm 49, older than you. Husband, father, we have a lot on our plates. And as men, we are raised to provide and to take care of everybody else. But a lot of times we men don't take care of ourselves. We don't do for us. We are overly generous. We just, we give and we give and we don't take care of ourselves. So when I ask men this question, what are you zealous about? Which means what do you love? Do you have something for you? Something that you, something fun for you when life is hard, when you're struggling, when, you know, you life is beating you down and you're trying to get this job and you won't get it. Or maybe this girl's not interested and everything kind of feels low. Do you have something that you do for you? Not for anybody else, not your family, your wife or whatever. So do you have something for you? You obviously do this work and you do with kids and adults and students, but when, you know, when you struggling, cause we all do, mm -hmm. what do you do for you? That's just for Michael to make you feel better. When I'm down and out, I don't have that energy that I normally have. Right. Um, I like to read my Bible and also I love sports. So I'll put on sports center. I'm I'm a sports junkie. Um, okay. I that really gets me in the zone and gets me to relax and be like, okay, this is just a moment. This is this gets a moment and it's going to get better. It's going to get better. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. Not a through talking to men doing this podcast, not a lot of men have something for themselves. We're we're so primed to just take care of everybody else that we don't always consider take care of ourselves. And I always use the analogy, you know, if you're in a plane crash and you're going down and you want to help the people around you, they always say you got to take your mask down first. Yes. I can't yes. help these people next to me if I don't have my mask on. I'm not at my best. Right? Yes. So yes. I'm at my best. And then, okay, I got you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go down the mm -hmm. aisle. So we got to go here. So it's important. And especially for, for men like you, when you go, you help kids and you help students. 
how you come up in front of people is important too. And we can yes. just and feel that positivity. So when you're struggling and you're allowed to struggle, man, life's tough. I'm glad yes. that you have something for you, man. Yes. Okay. And uh, can I mention one more thing? In this? Anything you want, yes. but please. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that it's okay to be selfish sometimes. Oh, yes. It's, it's okay to say, you know what? No. And then when you put those boundaries up, you start to see who is really in your corner. And sometimes as men, we have to remember that we're not a workhorse. That's right. we're, we're, it's okay to sit back and just relax and not do anything. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Today's my day to do nothing, whether it be not to answer text messages, phone calls, emails, whatever it may be, just, just to take that time out to yourself. Because if you don't take care of you, you're, you're, you're no good to nobody else. So true. So true. That's one of the big things that I kind of come about, come from doing this podcast is reminding men that you got to take care of you first so that you can take care of everybody else. It's in our nature, I think, to want to help people, but we have to make sure that the, you know, the helper, the person yeah. got to take care of us first. Right. So you're right. And I'm glad again, that you have things set aside and I'm a sports head too. I'm a sports head. So, you know, we're recording on a Saturday. Tomorrow, Sunday is football. I want to watch yeah. my football. You know, uh, baseball is my favorite sport. So, you know, I like okay. doing that. And then I got the kids and we'll play board games and do stuff. But sometimes me and my step aside, I'm going to go over here for a little bit, do something for me. So when I come back, I can be that better father, that better husband, that better everything. So I'm glad you have stuff for you. Um, the last letter in the word prize is E. The word is expectation. So a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Where are you going to be or where is BU and Prosper going to be in five years? Well, I see it being a huge, impactful, amazing company in the multi-millions. I see it doing impactful things and me doing corporate work and hiring the right team around me, just mm -hmm. just just being that great great example of companies and culture that people want to work for and and companies and schools want to work with. Okay. Us. I like that. That's progressive. That's you see big things in the future. And that's yes. what's up. We should always have, you know, things that we're striving for. And that's good. Yes. Where are you in a year? So not the not the business or the venture that you do in a year. What's going to be better about you personally a year from now? Mm. Being more present in, in, in terms of uh, for myself in terms of not always answer, answering the phone call is nice. That's, that's important. Doing these videos, interactions are great as well too, but being more present, going up to people and speaking to them when it comes to family and friends and and just me doing me doing a better job with that. That's something that I want to do a better job with. Okay, wonderful. All right, that's good. It's always good to kind of look at. I mean, what we do isn't who we are. So yeah. I like to always ask. So you know, what's your business? What you you want to see your business do, but also what you want to do personally. And it's good yeah. to have to understand that those are two different roads, and you know, have a vision for each. So that's good. The middle letter and the last letter in the word prize, it's I. And every one of these other letters have represented a word, but the I doesn't. It represents the man. So we're talking about you, Michael. So when we take all of the titles, so I, you know, entrepreneur, teacher, um, all these things that you want to do, author, everything that you want to do, when you put all that stuff aside and it's really just you, just you without all the shackles of everything else, who are you? Mm. I'm um, I'm a God-fearing man. I'm a 
son, I'm a brother, I'm a friend, a great person. I am an encourager, a motivator, just overall great person at the end of the day. That's good. That's a great answer. That's comfortable. I like that idea. Just recognition of all that you are and that you're a great person. I don't know. We men don't always get that. We don't get our flowers a lot. So that's why I always read the bio at the beginning so men can hear what they've done. But it's good that you're aware that you're a great person and, you know, and God knows that you're a great person and you continue to do great things every day for countless people that you are helping. Um, thank you for answering those questions. I appreciate that you answer questions in that prize mantra that I kind of came up with. I have a few other questions that I asked. So one, and there are these kind of random podcast questions, you know, this must be all deep and stuff to keep you thinking. What are you afraid of that you can not control? Mm. What am I afraid of that I cannot control? Um, certain outcomes in life, certain certain outcomes, whether it be for my business, uh, knowing that I can't control certain certain decisions when it comes to certain things in the business. I I don't I can't control everything. That's that's one thing. Um, knowing that everything is not going to work out like I may envision and that's okay too and that's okay too because sometimes we may want certain things we we have these dreams we have these desires but sometimes we want to happen right now but realistically sometimes we're not ready for it and sometimes if it happened on our time, we may not appreciate and sometimes we can fumble that the opportunity that we may not be able to get back. Mm -hmm. Valid point, valid. So the other end of that question is, what are you afraid of that you can control? <clears throat> that... Being able to, being afraid that I won't, I say, being, not being able to meet the expectation that I have for myself. Mm. Mm. A lot, that's a lot of us. That's a lot of men. We strive for perfection or to do big things and the fear of failure or just not doing what we expect or what other people around us expect. That's a mm -hmm. big, that's a big one. And I've heard, heard a lot of men say that. So it's, it's something we deal with, but, you know, with confidence and recognizing that you, we just keep trying, we keep yes. going and we do what we need to, we get where we need to be, yes. or where we expect to be. And, that journey may lead to other things. You might think you're supposed to be doing this. You may end up making the right turn somewhere else and then doing something else. You never yes. know. That's the journey yeah. is so important, right? Yes. You know, that that way to like, oh, I want to get this. My multi-million dollar company is going to be doing all these things. Who knows who you're going to meet along the way? Yes. And then maybe something else comes out. Maybe your business ends up doing something else. So, yeah. but there's nothing wrong. Well, no, that slight little fear of failure sometimes mm -hmm. to motivate it, right? Like pushes yes. you, keeps you going when it succeeds. Yeah. Um, I ask men two real questions. So I threw this podcast, two questions have kind of become important. And you answered one of them. I asked men what they do for themselves to self-soothe. What do you do for yourself to take care of yourself? And you mentioned that you're reading your Bible and you know sports and such. The other question I ask is if you were to do something, it's not something very smart. We're men, we're humans, we're going to mess up. We're going to do stupid things. That happens. My question is, is do you have 
a person, a friend, a guy, not family. So no brother or family member, mm-hmm. thing. you have somebody who you could call and say, I did something dumb. Somebody you could confide in, tell this person, your business, tell this guy, your business. And he may jab at you, make fun of you, laugh at you or something with it. But when you're done, you'd feel better. Do you have that kind of friend right now who you could lay your burdens down at and you'd be safe doing? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes, I do. Go ahead. It's, and that piece that you mentioned is so critical because as we talked about earlier, a lot of men don't, don't express themselves. They keep everything inside. Yes. And next thing you know, they become a ticking time bomb and things go left. But, but had they had an outlet for, an outlet, had that friend that they can call when things are not going great, it really makes a world of difference. It really does. Whether it be something serious or something stupid, right. you can, you still have that person that you can go to. That's good. That's good. Through a, I mean, I'd spoken to a lot of men and for a long time, a lot of men didn't have an answer for that. They didn't have that guy to confide in. Friendship, male friendship is an incredibly important thing. It's mm-hmm. an incredibly important thing because I think a lot of men, we feel like we're going through this world and we're going through these struggles and nobody else understands. Yes. And it's not the case. Most yes. of us men are going through very similar situations. And if you can talk to somebody about it, it makes it a lot easier to deal with. And if you can listen for another man, that's a thing. Talking to somebody is good, but even more important is being that listener to that man. Somebody who who, who just listen to him is such Absolutely. a big deal. Such Absolutely. a big deal. I never understood why men don't have conferences like like women do with the women empowerment conferences. I never understood why men don't have that. And but then I really sit back and thought about one day I, I said that a lot of men are prideful. They don't want to share their their problems or their issues or or anything that they might be going through. They say, you know what? I'm just going to keep it all inside, yeah. which which is not healthy. Not at all. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, we raise our daughters to be emotional. It's okay <laughs> to cry. It's okay to express yourself. That's not the case for our boys. Absolutely. So that's going to extend into adulthood and creating a conference where you're talking about yourself. I'm not even allowed to talk about myself when I'm a boy, when I'm eight. Mm-hmm. So much of masculinity is just just created these things. I play with army guys and GI Joe and stuff like that. All this stuff, they don't build in any emotional support in them. Yes. So I'm a boy growing up. And then when I'm in my twenties, there's not going to be a conference to talk about what I can do to get better emotionally. There'll be a business conference Mm -hmm. because we're Mm -hmm. here to make money, but there's no conference for what do you do when you're feeling depressed? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do you do when you think about you might want to kill yourself? You know, we we men attempt suicide so much more than women do. Mm-hmm. So much more. There's no conferences talking about that stuff. That's not being a man. Mm-hmm. Man mm-hmm. up. We don't deal in that. Nope. So, and it's terrible. It's yeah. so sad. But, yeah. but what you do. So when you build confidence in whomever you talk to. So mm-hmm. again, it all kind of comes back in. Boys grow up and we're just expected to do this. This is what a man would do. You take care of your family, you do all this and all that. And they don't build in that underlying stuff. That kind of, you know, you're a good man. You should feel confident about that. You should be proud of what you will do. It makes it easier to do all that other stuff. And it makes it easier to not want to do something bad to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you, your place, what you do is so incredibly, incredibly important. Um I mean, honestly, this was wonderful. This was a great conversation, Michael. I'm so glad that we got to talk. I will leave this to you. Can you tell people where they can find you, what exactly kind of what you do and everything, and where they can find you, social media, website, whatever. Give us all the information. And this will all be in episode notes. But listen, he's about to tell you right now. 
Yes. All my links, whether it be YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, everything is on my website at buandprosper.com. Once again, I am an entrepreneur and a youth speaker. I speak to high school and college students, just reminding them the importance of confidence, it being the backbone for them being able to thrive in school and also when they hit the professional realm, there's there's no way around it. Competence is really, once again, the backbone for any successful thing out there in the world in person. Fantastic. Thank you again. I appreciate your words. I appreciate your time. To everyone who's been listening and watching, thank you for giving me of your time and listening. And I end every podcast with some words to send out to you. It's a little bit different this week. Michael is a man who's out here helping people feel confident, feel better about themselves through education and through life. I want to leave this to you men. If you haven't been told this today or recently, you are a wonderful person. You are a damn good man. You're out here, you're working for others. I don't know you, but I know there's somebody that you're taking care of because that's what it is. This is something we all have in common, that you're taking care of people and you're doing a great job at it. You are supportive, you are empathetic. You are the presence that somebody needs. What I do always end the podcast with is somebody is happier today because they saw you. Somebody is happier because they heard your voice, because they know they're going to see you. So the mere thought of you makes somebody's day. I want you to remember how important you are. You don't always hear it. So I'm telling you, I'm glad you're here. Somebody's waiting on you. Somebody's waiting for you later on. Somebody's going to sit down and eat with you and talk with you and laugh or be deep in thought. And it's because you are around. So don't go anywhere. We need you here. Thanks for listening to or watching Men Are the Prize of Podcast. I'm Harvey. And never, ever forget that you are a wonderful man and you're the prize. Have a good day. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on here and talking. I really you. appreciate your time. Thank bro. you for inviting me once again. I truly appreciate it. And yes, I truly enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, it was it was definitely fun. It was it was it was definitely fun. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I will let you know when this is coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll send you some info. I probably I have a graphic that I'll create, and then I always post stuff. So on LinkedIn, I post it there and links to people. So send it. Send, and if anything is coming up that you want to promote, you can send me graphics or anything that you have, and I'll happily promote for you. Okay. Um, but otherwise. Oh, you know what? Oh, I forgot to ask. What I'm going to do for this season is every guest of mine, I'm asking them if they can make a minute or two minute video because my season ends on Father's Day. Okay. So the last episode will be a Father's Day episode. And what I'd like it to be is a video from every guest of mine who can do a minute or whatever, however long you think, just saying positive things to men about either being a father or just being a man. So okay. if you'd be up to it, and I see, and I see that you put posts, you put videos up on um on LinkedIn. If you wouldn't mind creating one for either Father's Day one or for just men in general, some affirmation, some positivity. Okay. If you wouldn't mind doing that and then sending it to me. And then at the end of the season, I'm gonna put all those videos together and make one episode for all okay, of my perfect. guests. Perfect, perfect. All right, cool. So if you can do that, you obviously you have all the time in the world to do it. But come June, well, I'd like June is when that, then that would I would need it by. So create it for me and then just email it and send it back to me. I'd really appreciate that. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, once again, I just want to say to you, you're doing a lot of great work out there. You're doing a lot. Of, you're doing a lot of great work. Thank you. Thank and you. just keep doing your thing, and you're helping so many people out there. Up and sleep out there. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That is the mission. All right. I will leave you to enjoy the rest of your weekend. I appreciate your time so much. You have a great day, Michael. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.